Hey guys, um, we'll be covering uh, hatching today, and uh, it's just going to be some basic stuff that I consider when I'm working. Um, you know, so keep an eye, keep an open mind there what I'm doing. I'm not going to be covering the whole thing or what what people are used to uh, seeing in a tutorial about this because there's just so many tutorials about hatching anyway. I'm going to cover basically what I like to do and what I don't do, and then you guys can. Uh, take on from there. So let's go to my little samples here. So uh, first thing that's important to do for hatching, and you might as well just not bother with hatching until you can do this. And that's uh, uh, consistency, especially consistent spacing. Um, consistent spacing regardless of line quality. So the best way I can describe this is just by coming in and hatching here. Uh, of course, now that it's live, I'm gonna screw up more often. But really, when you hatch, if the lines are generally the same distance and the, the darkness and the lightness always has a kind of consistency to it, then you're usually pretty safe here. I'm going to screw up a little bit. Of course I'm... Uh, you know, and that's really what you want. Um, you know, if you're going to go for perfect straight lines, but you're going to do this, this isn't, this isn't going to help you. And it's going to look weird. It's going to look like a texture. You know, it looks, uh, it looks inconsistent and it doesn't look like, um, it doesn't look like a value. You know, it looks closer to speed lines or some sort of effect. And you can be pretty wobbly with what you're doing here as long as the spacing is consistent. So first thing is first, master consistent spacing. Once you set a spacing for, for what you're doing, keep it on everything. Okay. This is your spacing. <clears throat> Regardless of where you work, if you go work here, same spacing. If you go work in another place, same spacing. My experience is this. If you're going to do some hatching, okay, you can hatch all day long and you can bend, like I'm going to actually rotate. Uh, rotate my angle here. I'm going to start actually going rounded let's see if I can get this thing rounded like this okay you can actually go pretty get some pretty wacky results I gotta actually make this a little more consistent as long as it's consistent I gotta redo this part it, it'll work but if you start getting, you know, the gaps start decreasing, you know, or you start increasing and decreasing the gap size, then it becomes a problem. Um, you know, so to me, in my opinion, for good good results this this consistent spacing thing is pretty much your base your base rule moving on from there you'll be like well how do I cross hatch and blah 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 <clears throat> let me tell you about cross hatching I think it looks ugly I every time I see it every time I see a 90 degree cross hatch I I, uh, I get little chills it just looks like a screen door I'm not talking about you know other angles I'm talking straight up like if you do this stuff here, if you go, I'm going to now go like this. This works in very rare scenario. Usually when you have very tight, so if I do very tight cross style hatching, okay, and then I'm going to go cross hatch here. You know, this is when it works, and even then I don't like it. And then if you get a third one in, usually this is where I stop caring. Because it gets dark enough that, 
you know, and you can't see the cross hatching anymore. But straight up 90 degree cross hatching, guys, man, I don't know. Maybe you guys will find someone who's really good at it. But it looks bad. It looks just, it just always looks like a weird screen door or a mark on someone's face. It never really looks like shading. So if I go back here again, I'm going to just do this the lazy way here. I'm just going to come in and erase it. Let's see if I can do this fast. I was doing this perfectly fine before I started recording, of course. And then, of course, uh, the pressure is making me do really bad lines here. Which is weird. I stream a lot. I shouldn't have this problem, but... You know, if you erase this, you know, and if you go, uh, if you go like this, if you go at, a, at an angle that isn't 90 degree, I'm usually pretty okay with that. I think it looks fine. You know, that sort of deal, totally cool with this. But as soon as things start going like right across it at, at a 90 degree angle, 90 degree is this. These are at weird angles. Definitely not 90 degree. Uh, so keep an eye on that. I mean, it's a weird, it's a weird thing to bring up and, you know, purists or whoever the fuck is going to tell you, you know, what doesn't matter. But genuinely speaking, I've never really seen it look good. Uh, especially done lightly. So when you're learning to do this, Pick a space, stick to it. Now, you're going to be like, well, what if I want to do, you know, varying levels? Yeah. My experience, if you want to crosshatch or you want to increase the crosshatching density, you, you go smaller, but you can't really go larger. Larger ends up looking weird, but if you go smaller, you go at halves. So if I want to go, if I want to add crosshatching, I have to do it at half the size of the original saw so every so basically two strokes per every length uh, if you do something like here I'll just go down here and I'll erase it later if you do something like a tube okay I'm going to draw a very faint line so I know where I'm hatching you know if you go I'm going to hatch this I should probably hatch it all the way to the base here and it'll make no sense I think this cross this tool isn't very good at cross hatching. You want a nice consistent line. This is a little better. I'm getting too much thick variation. I think my brush is a little wonky here. Let me see if I can find a good brush. This is a little too grainy. Maybe that's fine. Uh, maybe this one will be good. When you're cross hatching, you don't want your lines to wobble too much. I'm also on my tablet instead of my Cintiq, so I'm a little rusty with all this nonsense. Okay, this is pretty brutal. Let's try that again. Okay, a little better. I'm not used to having to stroke so my strokes being so long. Uh, anyway, as you do this, thank god I got layers here as you do this let's say you want to do um, kind of want to show where the, there's a shadow break uh, where the shadow is darker you're going to have to either go the same length double or triple the consistency but you want to kind of match what's already there you definitely don't want to start introducing new new lengths that aren't I I mean from everything I've seen if you want your hatches to work you need a consistency to what you're doing and uh, working on um, let's see if I can get this at, there you go I think up and down strokes is where I'm at right now
you know you want your you want your strokes to come out at at about consistent and you want your any other cons, any other versions based on the base one so if you got this this is based on the three these three are based on the, the same width but there's a third one and if it won't even thicker I have to put four in per length so this just like this and then there's one two three four five in total or no sorry there's this one and then there's this one one two three three four it's a kind of weird rule and there's no real rhyme or reason it's just from studies I've done it just seems to look better um, so that kind of caps that uh, moving on um, when you want to do shadows and junk I find that uh, you, so there's a lot of concepts on attaching where you're matching form I find that what, one of the cool things to do is to take the light source so let's say the light source is over here okay and then my shadow cast from the neck is here. I find it's cool to put straight lines coming in kind of from the direction of the light. And that gives this cool, uh, it kind of gives this feeling that the, the, the shadow, the, the light source where the light source comes from. And you can do this across a, a bunch of vast levels of shape. So, you know, there's hatching to kind of define form, which a lot of tutorials will talk about hatching along the, the, the form, which, you know, it gives a certain look. For instance here, you know, if you're going to hatch, always hatch along the form. The problem is, of course, if you do this, everything looks kind of like weird hatchy faceted you get no graphic style out of it it just looks more like a stippled drawing but if you want to draw shadows uh you want to draw hatching as a shadow uh, i find this works and then you can go over to the ear and if you have it the same direction you can even just change it just slightly to match the shadow a bit more i need to increase my stabilizer that's why Yeah. And that's a cool stylistic thing. I mean, you, you could also do basket weave, and that's not, not related to the, the direction. But you can do the same thing, and you'll get the same kind of feel. Man, basket weave so hard. I never do it enough. Of course, you got to go this direction. you got to find a new direction each stroke. You can do the same thing, and this is kind of regardless, uh, regardless of the direction of the light. You know this sort of deal, and give that impression. What I find most of the time, if you want a cool, simple shadow feel, you just kind of go up and down. It gives this idea that there's a there's a stark sunlight above, And it gives this kind of cool cast shadow feel. And I always draw this line, and this line is actually kind of there to give the impression that's where the, the shadow cutoff is, and it gives a starker shadow appearance. So if I do the same here, I could go, you know, that sort of deal. And I kind of like that. I like that, that feel to the, what it gives. And then from a distance, it looks pretty decent. I was zoomed in there. It looked kind of bad, but whatever. If it's consistent, it'll work. If it's inconsistent, it'll look like, it looks like this here. Okay. If it looks like this, you'll see right away it doesn't have that same kind of feel to it. You zoom out, and it looks like it's, some sh it's being shadowed. It seems wonky. <clears throat> and it doesn't really have a kind of appearance of anything. It doesn't feel consistent. But if, oh my god, I gotta undo all that. But if it's consistent, there's a nice kind of evenness to it, uh, and uh, and it feels more like a, a value. Of course, if you do it really well, it really feels kind of really uniform. Even though each stroke themselves could be kind of wonky, 
you know, be at a, at a, when you zoom out, all your values kind of blend in together, and, and uh, it really doesn't matter the line quality as long as you're very consistent. Uh, so here we're back here, and I'm going to just talk about the surface. So sometimes it's good to use use a surface. Here I'm going to I'm actually going to delineate the a shadow line and to make sure it actually kind of flows on the surface here. And then when I get to the top, I'm just going to go straight to show that this surface is flat. But when I'm here, I'm going to kind of just rotate a bit uh, along the surface. And this is fine too. I think that if you keep this to a minimum, it looks better than if you go like all the way around. I don't know. I mean, everyone's a little different to what they want to have consistency in, the, in style wise. So sometimes it's, it's a little too high. Uh, so when you want to do like a cool shadow like that, that's neat. You do something like that. Uh, cast shadow again. It's kind of weird because I find that when you're doing a shadow, like a shadow pool, it really doesn't matter which direction you pick, as long as all your shadow pools have a, a consistency to them. You know, if you're going to do this shadow at this direction, and then you're going to do another shadow over here in another direction, it looks really bad. You want to just make sure everything... I mean, it's not to say you can't have different directions. You know, if this is a shadow here and there's a shadow here, this is going to be different because the concept be behind this... Hatching is to show shadow and form, and the concept behind this hatching is to show uh, a pool of shadow from a cast light. Um, they're com they're kind of like completely different concepts. I mean, they both represent. Well, you know, actually, no, they don't represent the same thing because this represents both surface detail and lighting. This only represents lighting. There's nothing in here that says that the with the texture. I mean, if we start, if you really wanted to to get two kind of concepts in this one thing alone, let's say this is gravelly, you know, then we can do like a a gravelly, you know, texture, so that in in the hatching you can actually see that there's a texture in the soil or whatever the ground is made out of. So if you really want to get the two concepts, because these lines actually express two things. They show where the shadow, where there's a light shadow presence. I'm actually not showing the, the whole thing. I'm kind of hinting that there's a shadow here, but I didn't draw it in yet. But I'm saying this, this object is so light that even the shadow area is still kind of whitish. But these these hatches actually represent two things. Um, and, and here now I'll, my hatch for my shadow pool represents two things. And a lot of the time people ask me how I get my lines to look a certain way and really it all boils down to having my lines say more than just one thing, you know, and that's kind of the beginner's beginner stuff with lines. When you draw hair and you draw a line in the hair, are you is, is this line saying anything or is it just saying hair is hairy? Well, we know hair is hairy because we're looking at hair. We don't need extra lines to show that. Same thing for folds. Like this shirt has folds in it, but, you know... You know, if I have a shirt and then you do this in it, these lines aren't really saying anything in the shirt. You know, they're just lines for line's sake. You've got all this cool volume you can express in, in your lines. You can say, you know, is the shirt billowy? Is, uh, is, anyway, this is another tutorial in itself, but basically, Limit your lines. Make sure they say more than just one thing. I think is always the best scenario for good, strong line work. If they just say one thing, then they're kind of they're just lazy lines. So finally, I'm going to talk about just uh, how I how I use minimal hatching in what I do for comic work. So let's say, for instance, I want to uh, hint at a pectoral line, but I find that the line just using a line is too thick and it's too um, stark a contrast. 
and you'll see a lot of comic artists, especially uh, you know, American comic artists, do this in a very kind of I want to say obnoxious way. You've seen this before. They'll do this like this really angry triangular hatching everywhere, which is pretty graphical. And hey, man, some people like it. Friggin' I don't. Okay, so I am going to go a subtler route. Um, so initially when I did this, I actually kind of highlighted something cool. So I'm going to do it the original way I had. So I'm going to say, okay, I want this bicep to be kind of soft. So the line goes on here, and then I'm going to start hatching in. Hatching in the rest. So that instead of, it's kind of a soft stippling. I mean, there's other ways you can do this. You can do, you can do it like that. But I kind of want to show that. Oh, here that 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 the uh, muscle there is very softly hinted at. But then I want to kind of show another concept, and then this conflict, this initial hatching direction kind of conflicted with it, and that's the idea that you can hatch in kind of this weird concept of surface planes and you can replace lines almost outrightly with hatching if you want to make a really soft version of a line without having to uh, draw the line so thickly so for instance here i want to really accentuate the plane the the plannerness of the top of the of the breast I'll, I'll just tell you that right now it's the top of the breast and the problem of course is that once i do this which you know oh hey this looks cool i like it you know, I like this. It kind of conflicts with these lines down here. Now it feels like there's this weird, this goes here and this goes here. Um, and sometimes that works out, but at this point I'm like, you know, that's not really working for me. It kind of looks odd. So I'm going to just actually change the direction of these lines to match it. And now I've got what feels just a little more harmonious kind of line direction it actually the shape flows better and it kind of tells what I want to tell better and then if I go up here I'm like you know I want to kind of show off this muscle is kind of a deltoid and I want to show that the, the planner shift so these lines here aren't really sh it's not really shading as much as I just want to show I want to show this line but I don't want to draw this line you know so what I do is I want to hatch in what is like a, a stippled version, a, a hatched version of that concept. That way I can still get the concept of that line, but I just don't have to, I don't have to draw a very thick ham-fisted version of that concept. And that allows you to kind of do a leading line concept and a lot of uh, hinting. Here, you can do this. Without having to uh, drop down really thick obnoxious lines see then you have a conflict with these lines so I'm going to try to match these lines again here and it'll probably look better there you go that looks way better you know, so sometimes things seem off not because your hatching is wrong but because it's conflicting with the other shapes you know and then of course if I have like a, a neck here and I have a cast shadow. There's no reason I have to follow the rest of this. Now I can say, no, this is a different concept. I'm not expressing shape or the or or uh, the shape or form of the body. I just want to express a cast shadow here, and it's actually kind of good because it allows you to kind of break up your shapes a little better. Let's do this again. Uh, it, it'll kind of allow you to do let's get this up uh, let's see if I can get it less thick maybe I can get another brush <laughs> these brushes are so so grainy um, maybe I can hatch more Um, but you're, you're not, you don't have to be a prisoner of a certain direction or, you know, you don't have to go, oh, this whole thing has to be one direction. It's just what you're trying to do is ensure that conceptually speaking, your hatching matches, uh, 
your hatching groups match kind of the same kind of flow. And it can it can move over time. I mean, here we go. If I go over here, you know, this these hatch lines can can curve as time goes by across this this body, so that we get when we get down here, you know, I'm hatching in this direction. You know, and that can still work because it just. It has a, a, a sense of a unification from the just the direction, and it actually kind of gives a feel here. So that's the kind of stuff I'm thinking about whenever you see me hatching. Is how what what I'm, what what works with what's already there, and same thing with this hat, this shadow here. I'm not selling it. I wish I could have more drawings. I could sell this better, but you know, if I had more cast shadow bits. You know, if this character was covered by some leaves, these terrible leaves here, you know, I, I also do this new direction stuff. This is one of the few times I think you know, I'm not I'm not big on saying Cintiq solves all your problems, but sometimes <laughs> it makes a few of the jobs a little easier, and this is one of them. Because I got to use my. It's very hard to get my this level of precision across a huge shape. You know, and now I got like a a cast shadow of leaf kind of effect going on here, and you can tell it's distinctly different. Than what I'm, what what these hatches represent, and it's actually good that they're like that, because if they match, then you start thinking they they were part of the body or they were some sort of shape or form <laughs> element, or it looks like a tattoo. Whatever the deal, it, it feels like a different entire concept, and that pretty much covers kind of uh, what I do conceptually. Man, these videos always go on so long, and I feel like I'm talking 10 seconds. But anyway, hopefully this helps you guys, if only a little bit, to uh, kind of undo, don't do too much hatching, keep it minimal, make sure your lines do more than just say one thing, keep a consistent flow of your lines based over the, what they're conceptually doing, if are they expressing shape, form, or texture, value, or cast shadow, etc. Alright, thanks guys. Talk to you later.